Ha! Lee Marsh says, what were some of the crazy moments as the showrunner? I'm curious, like, I'm curious what it was like from your attic in Manchester sometimes being <laughs> granular with us on the ground in San Francisco doing all of our weird crap while you were alone in a room <laughs> helping manage yeah. all of this. People may not know how the, the Mythbusters working model was a bizarre one. It, it really was bizarre was. because it was filmed in San Francisco and edited in Sydney. So and this huge disconnect between the two. And then, and then you were on a third it, disconnect. I was then in Manchester in England. But what's what was weirdly advantageous about that was it meant the show ran 24-7. Right, because you so talked to Australia all, in the morning yeah. and us in the afternoon. Yeah. And so it wasn't a case that a problem at 5 p.m. on a Friday couldn't be fixed till 9 a.m. on Monday right. because of the time difference. Right, right. Um, but I suppose with... Th there's a lot of crazy stuff that I had to deal with that is just behind the scenes show running. Right. That's not actually that interesting i don't think <laughs> yeah. it's you know legal issues and health and safety issues and managing networks and how they're feeling yeah the normal crazy stuff on mythbusters went into the show yeah you know yeah. the show had that integrity you know when we blew up that did that experiment knock your socks off i think it was at a sparto quarry where the shockwave reverberated around the town. You know, right, we hit about a cloud that. cover and broke windows yeah. miles away, yeah. Of course, the cannonball. Yeah. Um, you know, it goes in the show. And everything about, actually not everything. I tell you, the one thing I never quite had the nerve to do was test the cannonball on the show. What do you because mean? the story of what that cannonball did, where it oh. went through the... <laughs> you want to go back thing. and try and reenact yeah. its path? yeah. How did it do all that jumping and go over the freeway? And also, you, it, ha it had a great. Uh, I mean, this is this is getting into the weeds of it. Yeah, yeah. We had to do that sort of public forum yeah. about it, where we visited the town and and all people could come and talk about what what mm -hmm. happened. Will it happen? Many again? steps of repairing our yeah, relationship yeah. with Dublin Pleasanton, California. And my appearance had a level of sort of myth to it, really. So. Well, as as did the whole thing actually. So when the when when the incident happened, the first report said that the cannonball was about the size of a baseball, which is sort of about right. Then it was a cantaloupe. It's always softball. Then it was a melon. Then it was a basketball. <laughs> oh wow! The thing kept kept getting oh. bigger and bigger. And when I arrived, it said showrunner Dan Tapser has flown here first class from Manchester. It's like mm, no, no, <laughs> and arrived in a Rolls Royce. <laughs> What? And we had we had production vehicles that were always like six or seven year old kind yeah. of battered. Oh, they were beat to crap. And I, I arrived and we gave them all names, do you remember? And I arrived in the car we called the curry car because, oh, because someone had spilt takeaway curry in it. It and smelled it for smelled, the entire 12 yeah, years we never, worked with that car. It smelled like curry. And I was like, yeah, that's interesting being seeing a myth develop from the inside. Dude, we had a reporter come spend two days with us interviewing me and Jamie, talking to us together and separately, and went away and described Jamie as several inches taller than me, which is the opposite <laughs> of the truth. <laughs> He's several inches yeah, shorter yeah. than me. Yeah. I just, while we've been talking about the cannonball, yeah. I'll just tell this story. I don't know if you remember this. When we did that public forum thing, yeah. I had to sort of stand at this lectern, which reminded me of that scene in Jaws. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I had to stand at this lectern, and I thought, okay, my opening line, and I practiced this, on my first class flight and Rolls Royce travel, <laughs> um, where it was to, you know, look around the audience and say, look, obviously apologize to all of that stuff, but then say, it's not gonna happen again because we're never gonna fire a cannon at this facility ever again. So quite simply, it, it therefore can't happen. Yeah. So, I'm, you know, I'm doing the apology, I'm feeling it's going okay. We will never ever fire a cannon at this facility ever again. I'm thinking, okay, that went well. And then behind us, they were like all the police chiefs. And one of them said, too damn right. And it was a brilliant icebreaker. And yeah. everyone laughed. And it's like, okay, okay, <laughs> this is good. But then later, I watched it. It was on CNN. Yeah. And of course, I'm the only person mic'd up. So all you see is me saying, we'll never, ever fire a cannon at this facility ever again. <laughs> 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 and it's terrible, absolutely terrible. You don't hear the guy say too damn right. So you just hear people laughing. You do, you, yeah, and me in particular, I like look almost down the barrel of the camera and giggle. 
Oh my God. It looks so insincere. But. Um, the moment that I remember from this is um, there was some disagreement between Jamie and I and Discovery about whether or not we I should remember. talk publicly about yeah. this. And Jamie and I felt strongly our way and we did what we wanted to do, which was we drove, and you agreed with it. Like the whole production agreed. We drove out, we apologized, we told everyone we we're going to make yeah, it right. We owned it. And then we had a press conference. And uh, I had specifically asked you, uh, the public information officer for Alameda County to just let some press know that we'd be there. So we walk out of the guy's house and there's the news trucks and 10 reporters and a phalanx of microphones. And have I ever told you what I was thinking when I looked at the phalanx of microphones? <laughs> I'm looking at them and I'm like, oh, they're sitting in an aluminum grid rack. <laughs> Oh, that's been chamfered and cut and cut at an angle. It's, it's really specific. It's half inch aluminum. Like somebody did that. That's like a good three hours on a machine shop. It can't be a big market for those things. I mean, how many do they sell? Like a couple hundred a year? Does each news truck carry one of these? And do they call each other and say, you'll break out your microphone stand? Or is it the first one on set? Puts up the microphone stand and everyone puts their microphones in. This is how I was thinking as I'm approaching the most frightening press opportunity I've ever had in my life. And it was another great lesson because the, the questions were, you know, how do you feel about this? What's going to happen? How are you going to make this right? And we answered those questions honestly and forthrightly, and the energy just disappeared. And after like five minutes, all the reporters were like, well, thanks, guys. We got everything yeah. we need. And we packed up and went home. Yeah. That was an incredible lesson in like, you say something and you're hiding, they can smell it and they're going to keep asking questions. But when you tell the truth, everyone's just, they get it. Yeah. But it's, it is one of those strange examples where, uh, you know, it was, it was awful. Yeah. And, you know, it still gives me nightmares. Yeah. But at the same time, good things did come out of it. I'm grateful for what I learned from that. Whenever someone, whenever a moderator asks me, I mean, it, it's a funny structure because we're talking about it with the knowledge that no one was hurt and everything. Whenever a moderator asks me about the cannonball and the audience laughs, I tamper that and say, this is literally the worst day of our lives. Like, mm. it's, we are so, it was, we're glad that none of us were severely injured, but it would have been even worse if a civilian, someone not attached to production had been injured. That would have been, none of us would have, yeah, you know, let yeah, go of that. No. Yeah.